Ladies and gentlemen, our story is nearing its end. Let us cherish these moments that we have left. I'm your host, DJ Confused, as in what I'm going to do next week. If you've been with us the last three weeks, then you know this story that has been shared with us has taken its toll on everyone, but especially Travis. The amount of grief this man has suffered is more than any should ever have to face. If you are new here then, you have missed a lot, and it may just seem like any old story, but it's not. The time is 8.03 in the morning. The weather is foggy, as it is in my mind. Traffic seems to be stuck, as no one wants to go anywhere until they hear the story. With me is the man who really needs a proper introduction, Travis Clark. Now, Travis, we've been through many stages of your life, some happy, some sad. Yesterday, we had a caller on the air that I believe you wanted to tell her a story. I don't know if you still want to or not, but the airwaves are yours, my man. Teach me, teach us, words of your wisdom. While I like to thank you for the kind words, I am just a man who has lost his way. You have given me something that I didn't know was possible to have. I do have a story and I do want to tell it. But first, let me hear a story from you. A story from me? Yes. Let's go back to the first time we met. Well, I'm no storyteller. I'm a story listener. Isn't this a talk show? It was, but you have taught me. Sometimes it is better to shut up and hear, actually hear what others are saying. What are you hearing now? That I will spend a lifetime trying to understand you. I'm not that tough to figure out. If you allow yourself to hear, you would hear and feel pain. That's all I brought to you. Pain. You haven't brought pain. I had plenty of that before you. Men hear loud noises, but they listen to strong words. You brought me here because I spoke loud and you heard me. But you have listened to the words I said, like you all have. They are just words, but if you say them with meaning, they become strong. If I asked you what was stronger, the water or the fire, what would you answer with? If you asked three weeks ago, I would have said water, because the water can put out the fire. But after knowing you, I know the fire is stronger. And why is that? Because the fire is within us. It's our decision on whether we let it consume or purify us. And you said that you couldn't tell a story. But I didn't. You just did, and people listened. Succeeding through incompetence, I guess. You know, the funny thing is, when I die, I'll have a bunch of people in suits that I don't know, maybe people in high positions. But when you die, you'll be surrounded by your friends. Imagine if you suddenly learned that the people, the places, the moments most important to you were not gone, not dead, but worse, had never been. What kind of hell would that be? Are you saying that your stories never happened? My stories happened. They are real. They are my hell and my joy. They are me. I would really like to hear another one of your stories. And you shall. Travis... Can we talk for a moment? Sure, what's going on? I lost my keys yesterday. I had to get a ride to work. Really? I was getting dinner ready and I just found them in the freezer. I don't get it. Is that a joke? Are we having frozen kiwi for dinner? It's not a joke. I'm just losing my mind. Losing your mind, honey? What's wrong? I don't know. Work is busy, moving into a new house, being pregnant. Life is just really busy right now. Becky, I told you that I would... Wait, did you just say that you're pregnant? Travis, we're about to have a family. Are you sure? I went to the doctor's office last week. You knew for a week and you haven't told me? I wanted to be sure. 
Sure of what? Sure that I wanted to be a mother. Becky, what are you saying? I know we talked about it. But it's different now that it's real. In a good way? <laughs> Sorry, in a really good way. Do you know what sex it is? It's too early to tell right now. What do you want it to be? I... I want it to be, um... Becky. I want it to be you. I don't follow. You mean a boy. No, boy or girl doesn't matter. I just want to be able to look at our child and see you. You look better than me. <laughs> Silly. I mean, I, j I just... <laughs> Never mind. Becky, say it. It's just that you're gone all the time. I miss my man. Becky, come here. I held her tight and whispered something in her ear. Something that you don't get to hear. It was only for her. If I could have all the time in the world, do you know what I would do? I would spend the time with you because it would be a pleasure just being with you. We embraced and dinner was never made that night. We laughed and thought about names, colors for the walls, how the child would grow, schools. We thought about all of it, even though the child was no bigger than a peanut. We had it all planned, or so we thought. Travis? Travis, wake up. I'm up. My water just broke. Let's do this. I hurried up and got dressed, grabbed the bag we kept by the door, fired the car, and drove away. Only I got a block away and turned around to get Becky in the car. My mind was thinking of a million different things. I was overloading. Becky didn't say a word about me driving away without her, and I was smart and didn't bring it up. We drove to the hospital, the army nurses and doctors took her inside. I parked the car and ran inside to find her. They were just wheeling her into a room. The nurses were all over, checking vitals, listening to her heart, asking questions. I couldn't keep up. For the first time in a long time, I felt helpless. I stood in a corner and watched all the nurses do their magic, not a single one bumping into one another. It was a choreographed masterpiece. One wrong thing and they all would have tumbled. I don't know how they did it. Even though I knew it was no different than combat, orchestrated chaos is what we called it, but this was different. This was magical. Travis! Hearing my name snapped me out of my trance. Yes? <sighs> Can you call my parents? I quickly left the room, not even acknowledging her. That is the second I just left her. What was I supposed to do? Oh yeah, phone call. I got to the phones and I just stared at them. I couldn't remember the number. What is the child going to do to me? The child is not even born yet and I'm becoming a mess. Breathe, Travis. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I calmed down enough to remember how to use a phone. I called her parents first. The phone rang and rang until Mr. Williams finally picked up. Is it time? Yes, sir. How did you... We'll be there as soon as we can. I called my parents next. I don't even remember the phone ringing. Hello? Dad? Is she having the baby? Yes. I will be there as soon as I can. How everyone had handled this better than me? I'll never know. I slowly walked back to the room. I was scared. Was I going to be a good father? I opened the door and the doctor was there. I don't remember what happened next, but in a moment I saw the second most beautiful thing in my world. It was a baby girl. With a set of lungs on her too. But as soon as Becky held her, the noise stopped. Travis. Come here. Say hello to your daughter. I walked around the gurney and knelt beside my wife and child. I put my hand on her, then grabbed her hand with my finger. What do we name her? What do you like? Kelly. I think she is a Kelly. I love that name. 
Kelly it is then. Nice to meet you, Kelly Clark. I looked at her and then at my beautiful wife. Here by my side is an angel. Here by my side is my future. The doctors took the baby away to check on it and clean it up. Then let us be alone together. I love you, Becky. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For taking me to the hospital? For putting up with these last months? For letting me put my cold feet on you in the middle of the night? And you not moving to let me warm them up? Travis, you have nothing to be sorry for. We are together. And we just watched the miracle of life happen. Travis, you are a dad now. And I'm a mom. How do you do that? Do what? Make me fall deeper in love with you every day. You're smart, that's all. It's what you should do. They brought our child back later, wrapped up nice and warm in a blanket. We both held her. She never made a sound with us. That night, anyways. The door opened. So where's my grandbaby? Dad, you got here fast. Meet Kelly. Hello, Kelly. I'm your grandpa. You could have came in the morning. What? We're not letting your parents be the first to see my granddaughter. I get to spoil it first. We laughed and talked into the morning. I knew Becky was tired, and so was I. But neither of us cared. As long as we were holding her, nothing else mattered. In the morning, Becky's parents showed up, and the new grandparents fought with the old ones. Becky was the first to have children in her family, but soon, Kelly had lots of cousins to play with. Later, my dad pulled me out into the hall. Travis, you did good. I know that your mom will be better at this, but now the real journey begins. A true child is taught how to think, not what to think. You will have to give her freedom. Let her make mistakes. Let her learn. Will she get hurt? Yes, she will. But remember, tears can be wiped away. Memories and lessons can't. The hardest thing for a parent to do is watch them fail so they can succeed later. As long as you're there for them and support them in everything they do, nothing will go wrong. The journey starts now. Make it a good one. As he walked back into the room, a shiver ran down my spine. No pressure, Dad. No pressure. Growing up with brothers and sisters, I thought to myself, I can do this. It'll be a piece of cake. Boy, was I ever wrong. But she turned out perfect. I couldn't ask for anything more. She helped Becky when I was gone and never rebelled against us. Becky and I made a great kid together. One that I'm proud of. That's my story for the day. I hope you liked it and saw that I'm not special. I hold no superpowers. I'm just a guy trying to figure it all out. Travis, I was speechless the entire time. You have had so many special people in your life. I'm jealous. Nothing to be jealous about. They're just people like you and me. Well, they might be like you, but they are not like me. I'm dreading tomorrow as it will be the last show. The last show? What are you doing? Is something happening? I'm quitting this. Travis is right. The world is out there, and it's time for me to open my eyes and see it. Am I scared? Yep. But I have to do this. I have to face my fears. Maybe Travis will continue his journey, too. I don't think we're done with Travis yet. Travis, as always, it is a pleasure. Even though I dread tomorrow, I know that it has to end. Whether it be positive or negative, it has to come to a conclusion, or at least a bridge. Till tomorrow, everyone, and I hope that whoever was supposed to hear this story heard it. Not with only their ears, but their heart, too. I bid you farewell, but only temporarily. <laughs>